Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. So I was going through my videos the other day and auditing them and there was a comment that stuck out to me and it said something about that I wish somebody had told me that I could use jazz chords to play uh, rock music, specifically like math rock stars of music. And it never really occurred to me that I'd been using all these jazz chords all along without thinking that other people didn't really think that you could apply jazz chords into rock music. And I know that sounds silly. And this got me thinking back to like, when did I start using these like typical, you know, kind of like jazz shapes of like a, you know, like a major seven sound like that, or a, you know, a minor seven chord like that, or, you know, the different variations that we can use of these kind of typical jazz kind of sounding chords. And um, I was thinking back and I couldn't really pinpoint a specific time, but there were a few things that I would like to share with you today that got me, th as I was going through this thought process, that perhaps will be useful for you as well. So what I noticed is that probably one of the first songs that I learned where I was starting to use more of these kind of uh, in a major or minor seven kind of sounds, let's say, was probably in a song that we all know. <laughs> that FC premix song. Um, these are uh, what we call shell voicings, you know, just the minimum amount of notes that's needed to make up a chord name, let's say. And these are kind of like this minor seven sound, um, major seven. Um, what's that? That's the chord progression that's typically going on there, but they are like these chords instead. The major nine chord there, and kind of like a minor seven and a, and a minor nine sound there. And without really knowing it, I was learning these kind of like jazz sounds uh, that Thomas Eric was using in the Fall of Troy to create this kind of like really rocky kind of, um, you know, alternative styles, really cool riffs. And those had a lasting impact on me, especially those, um, let's say this, you know, this minor um, chord voice in here. Because it starts to crop up everywhere that I look in math rock and let's say Midwest emo music that's in standard tuning. Um, the other day I was transcribing a tangled hair riff that was like... So again we've got that minor go down a fret. And the same here again. And another minor chord here as well. This chord here, this sus shape, is another one that I use a ton, and it's not derived from jazz, so to speak. This one, this um, kind of a, a power chord with the ninth added here, but we could call it a sus two chord, let's say, the suspended second here. And this one I first learned from the band uh, Coheed and Cambria. That chord always spoke to me, it just had something extra on top of a power chord like that. And of course you can't use these everywhere. But they are a wicked alternative to power chords. And speaking of power chord alternatives, along with this minor seven shape, that major seven there, if we take out the, the top highest uh, degree, let's remove that from the chord. And we have that one there. Another excellent power chord alternative there. So if we go back to this sus shape here, it's great for voice leading. So you have that melody going on. But that again, a wicked power power chord alternative that you see use a ton in math rock Midwest emo is based around uh, that major seven shape. Um, and I think, again, one of the first places I noticed this was another, um, another, co uh, another, another Coheed and Cambria song. And there's that sus chord shape again, but I was definitely using it before that because of the, um, um, you know the get up kids if you're if you're a long time fan of the channel you know it's one of my uh, one of my favorite bands that's, that got me into like the midwest emo and math rock side of thing and again we got that minus seven shape there and then we go 
power chord into that major seven, um, you know, shell voice in here. Get rid of the third degree though. <sighs> Just sounds wonderful. Um, another song, Gold Fur, Blue Wave. Minor seven chord, sus two. Different one there on the end. And I've applied this kind of major seven voicing here. It's kind of like a we say like a major seven admit the third degree because we haven't got the that third sound going on in here, um, missing this sound. Um, I've used that one. Um, in some of my own songs as well, that one's a uh, one called "Outside Out, Out of Sight, Out of Mind" by my band Mountains, and I even based um, around this major nine chord as well, um, like a, a riff in the same song. There's also a Delta Sleep song. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can hear that spy dolphin. Yeah. Some, somewhere going on there as well. And I've even noticed times where we have like the, if you're familiar with like a, like that dominant nine kind of sound. Um, in a song called Pool by Trico, which actually has a, a minor seven. And then, Kind of that dominant sound there, and then a, a minor seven chord as well from jazz. But the application is definitely you know, a, lot, a lot more rocky sounding and application, just repeating myself there, but. Um, as you can probably tell, this video is not scripted, it's just a stream of consciousness coming at you. Um, also, if we go to Chon as well with this introduction here, we have plenty of these jazz chords applied more in like a, a rock, prog rock kind of context, we could say. That minor 9. Um, what's it? Minor 11. E13 minus uh, major seven flat five. Um, G minus seven. G minor eleven. Okay, A major nine sound. So the littered all throughout this kind of math rock, Midwest emo, uh, whatever you want to label it kind of universe, especially when we play in standard tuning. And so the point of this video is I just wanted to show you that it is completely possible to use these chords, not just for jazz music. And I know that might be obvious for some of you, but clearly from the comments that I saw as I was going through my videos, it's not so obvious to a lot of people. So I just wanted to make it clear that you can take influence from these chords and apply them to your own music. Uh, again, I've come up with countless ideas from these chords and that was what led me on to my journey to noticing that these causes exist all over the 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 uh, the world of <laughs> where math rock meets Midwest emo, let's say. And I'm pretty sure there's plenty of examples that you know, and there's more examples that I know that I can't think of off the top of my head. So throw any of those down below. I want to know what songs that you learned these chords from. What were your experiences? And um, did you learn anything new today? And one last chord progression that I use um, to use some more of these jazzy kind of shapes. There's an outro chord progression to uh, a song of mine called Incandescence. <laughs>
which have been around on the channel for a while, I've played that song to death, but I hope you like hearing it one last time. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope it was inspiring. That's all I hope you get out of this. If you're interested in learning more about math rock, then you can join thousands of others learning math rock with my math rock ebook. And there's a link for that down below in the description. Really thank you to the patrons that support this channel and I'll have another video for you soon. Until then, goodbye.